Hey everybody, Rose of Cloud9 here. Welcome to a new video. I'm doing something a little different this time. I'm delving into the world of Warhammer 40k. Uh, I do these once in a while. Not really my thing, but sometimes these are really, really fun kits to uh, just grab one, build it however you want. Great stress relief. Um, to just do something a bit out of the ordinary, and that's exactly what I felt like doing with this particular kit. I really wanted to try something and that was making a rusty tank and how to paint yellow. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to paint yellow. Part of this was from an experience of going into a games workshop store a couple years ago and I saw an army of yellow. Uh, I really like yellow space marine. I think they're just kind of cool looking to me. Uh, but the, whoever had built this army used a ton of layers of yellow paint and it was kind of blotchy. And so I thought I'd show how to do that with an airbrush because yeah, airbrushing yellow, yellow is one of the harder paints. Uh, there's been a couple of projects where I've had troubles with it. It's a very fussy color and can be a very fussy paint. So I decided to use one of these. I believe this is a Rhino. It's one of the newer tank, one of the newer re-releases. You saw some of the new sprues in there and that's about all you get. I gave all that stuff to my brother and he happily took it and built it and I don't actually remember what this is because he actually bought it for me and I didn't bother to write down what the kit was so I apologize. So these kits are really easy to put together there's not a lot to them um, they do kind of show a bit of their age some seam lines and stuff like that but for the most part they're pretty clean and really easy to put together so I you know I find their construction to be very very simple but very effective so here you can see I'm using some Tamiya extra thin cement to put into all the seam lines. Tamiya glue works very, very well with Citadel plastic. I've seen a lot of gaming mothers use um, Citadel super glue, and I find that their super glue does not hold like they think it does. Tamiya glue, whoa, that stuff really reacts well to Citadel styrene. So I recently learned that they do have their own styrene cement. I just haven't seen it to try it out for myself. So. Uh, whenever I find it, I'll get around to doing that. So here I'm building some of the interior. As you can see, this is part of the bottom there. Uh, it's kind of interesting that this tank does have a bit of an interior. Um, because it's actually very nicely detailed. It's a bit sad you don't really get to see it. Um, it'd be kind of cool to have one lit up one day. Uh, that's, you know, all you're going to really light up is the computer consoles, but it'd be kind of cool. So. Yeah, here I'm putting the, the two halves together and then I can just cement the other side and sandwich everything on top of each other and it simplifies the building process. Um, to just glue it, you know, they have like, some of these kits have posable parts, but I've found over the years, like from my brother's experiences rather, the times where he's left them posable, it really kind of makes the tank or whatever the project is, I should say, kind of makes them a bit more flimsy. They don't, they like to be one solid brick. That's just my own little experiences there. So, uh, the, the, big pro, the big thing about this project was I wanted to make a rusted tank. Um, I tried doing rust on a couple other projects, but I had this idea for rust and using Humbrol Mascol solution. Uh, that was kind of the that was kind of the deciding factor in this was a lot of the liquid uh, masking products that you can buy and that I've seen uh, they're very they dry very hard and they, they lose all their moisture in them but uh, Humbrol Mascol stays like a rubber um, which is really cool it, it still can it still sticks to its rubbery um, substance you know I've I had one for sitting on the shelf for six months with that stuff on it uh, number one it did not dye the canopy which was a, a worry of mine I, I realized that after a little while because it's purple and it was still rubbery so I thought heck I'm gonna go try that out here and I did this earlier in August so right here I'm doing something I am cutting off the tabs this is again a posable part and you're gonna see here in a moment, I'm gonna use Microscale Crystal Clear. It is like a super, I don't know, hybrid white glue. It's really cool stuff. And you use it for gluing clear pieces. Um, really, really amazing product. I love this stuff. And this is gonna temporarily glue it down there. Um, the longer you leave this stuff on, the harder it dries. So uh, it was easy for me to just kind of pull this off after the project was done. And I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to really worry about anything there. 
So here I am. This is Tamiya XF10 flat brown. We're getting to the um, first stages, which is the rust. I'm going to be painting the all the rust and then masking off the rust and then painting the yellow. Um, so yeah, this is just flat brown. It's a very nice color. It's very easy to airbrush these Tamiya colors. I was thinking of trying out the Citadel airbrushing colors, um, especially the yellow, but. I couldn't get them in time, so I I just they they were delayed in getting there, and it could have taken uh, about a month, and I wasn't really willing to wait that long, so I just decided to use Tamiya. I would like to try the Citadel Air Colors one of these days. It's still on my list, but as far as I'm concerned, I really love using Tamiya colors to airbrush. So, um, if you're doing any of this by hand, it's easier. To paint the the yellow and then to do rust chipping effects afterwards for for what I'm doing here. So here we got a bit of hull red and it's kind of a red brown color as you can see. And I'm just going around uh, uh, and um, throwing all these colors together. And uh, you can see I'm making these squiggling patterns everywhere. And this is just going to blend all the colors together. So you're going to get some very dark spots which have been rusty longer. Um, and you're going to get these progressively lighter shades of, of rust eating away at, at uh, places. This was actually really fun to do, to make all those all those squiggles everywhere. And so yeah, here's some more red-brown, so I'm progressively getting lighter with my colors as I go along. Um, that's my main, my main goal in, in doing this part here. So, uh, as you can see, it's starting to look kind of rusty. It's uh, not it's not too bad, but it's not it's definitely not where we want it yet. We want to add a bunch more layers and I was kind of messing around with the with the colors to see how how things would look as I as I went along with it. So here's our next color, NATO Brown. I love NATO Brown for all sorts of colors. Um, I, I, I've never used it on any NATO NATO aircraft or any NATO machinery before but it's it's a very very bright red and it looks fantastic I, I like to use it for wooden pieces in aircraft um, especially World War one aircraft because it, it, again it's very bright and it has like a lacquer feel to it and here it kind of has as you can see it, it's got kind of a bit of an orange uh, tint to it which is what I'm which is what I'm looking for and you can also see here this time I'm making a lot of little dots everywhere because um, these are more rust areas that I, I, I imagine would be kind of fresher chipped areas, um, more recently rusting. And then this is the final color, this is the orange. And I do regret using orange, I should have, after this I should have gone one step further and added more white. And I should have had a brighter orange, that's my only, that's my only complaint um, in using this. Um, that in, in this project as far as the rust goes I did go back and do more rust after which you'll see in a moment but again it was mostly just making these little daubs and 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 brushing that onto the NATO uh, brown so that really helped out in that and in, in, in getting all those layers so it actually looked really good like this I was really impressed with it and I could have gone ahead and just weathered it and and I would I think I would have had a fairly nice looking tank but um, yeah, I really wanted to get that that uh, yellow color on there, so I think this looks pretty darn awesome. So, yeah, sorry for those of you who do not have an airbrush and cannot do this, I do apologize. But like I said, if you do not have an airbrush, this is all easier to do after, um, after everything's done. Okay, and here we go. This is Future. Future is a floor polish. It has many different names nowadays you got to go look into what they call it now it's like pledge floor care or something like that but what it is is it's a gloss coat it's acrylic gloss coat and what I'm doing this for is I'm putting this on um, I usually put this stuff on because I really like it and I apply a flat coat once it's done to get rid of the shine um, but what this is gonna help do is when I put the um, the uh, mask all on top of this it's gonna help it to not stick to the paint um, in a way that it will uh, lift and remove the paint. Uh, so here's the mask all. I'm just pouring it into a little cup so I don't have to sit there with that big stink. Um, this is a sponge just from a Games Workshop kit. 
I really like their sponges for doing stuff like this because they're very thick. They're quite dense. Um, I find that they s apply better. And you can see here I'm getting some good results, but I didn't actually get the results that I wanted. And uh, this was a bit of a try trial and error uh, for me here. And yeah, here I was finally getting what I wanted, and that was just to dab it on very, very lightly um, and just go everywhere. I didn't care about being a little conservative. I just thought, to heck with it, it's a 40k tank. Let's, let's beat it up a bit. Let's make it a rust bucket. You know, uh, didn't quite end up that way in the end of everything, but I thought it looked pretty darn good as far as I was concerned. So, yeah, here I'm adding it to a toothpick. Lots of tools that you can use for this stuff. I do not recommend, I repeat, do not use your brushes on this stuff. Uh, I have no idea how to ever clean it out, and I've a lot of people have said the same thing. I've ruined two brushes from this stuff. It's wonderful stuff, as long as you don't use your brushes on it. So here's a brush I am going to use. This is like a dollar store brush. The bristles are plastic, and this was the best thing ever. Look at this pattern. It was perfect. And what was also great about it is it was only like, you know, it was a dollar for like 20 of these brushes. And so all I have to do is throw it away when I'm done. There's no, you know, I don't feel guilty about using one of my good brushes. Um, and the plastic bristles really helped out. Uh, they, they really made the difference to this build. Um, in, in, in far, as far as um, adding that, that texture that I wanted and that bit of randomness to it as well. Um, so you can just see these shapes. They look great to me. They look like scratches. And that was really what I was, what I was going for with this. And I was, I was having way too much fun doing that. So we're back to airbrushing. Now this is the very important part about yellow paint, you guys. You need a good base coat of white. Whether it is white paint or white primer. White primer would probably be your best bet for whatever miniature you're painting yellow or model, whatever it is, a trainer, aircraft, or anything. But I gave it a good base coat of white. And I wanted to get everything kind of covered and uniform and this is going to help the yellow out a lot because it's, no, what it's going to do, number one, it's going to make the yellow a lot brighter and it's going to help the yellow paint uh, adhere to it a bit better to have this nice uh, even coat of white paint. So this did take me a while to do to get it all nice and again, as I said, uniform, but it was totally 100% worth it in the end to just take my time and slowly keep on painting on. This is. Um, XF2 Tamiya Flat White, if, if memory serves, so. Now, before people start yelling at me, this is a reproduction metal. I would never do this to a real one. This is just a bit of silly putty. Um, my army have the crosses. I don't know what army they are, because I only have actually one of them. <laughs> um, I'm not too big on having an army, but I know what I like. So this is a reproduction metal. Please calm down. I would never, ever, ever do this to a real one. I'm getting out a fresh hobby knife. This is some Kamoi tape from Tamiya. And all I'm gonna do is trace around it here. And the silly putty is underneath to hold it in place. You can use something like plasticine, uh, blue tack. I like silly putty, um, especially on this stuff because it does not leave any grease or residue. It basically cleans itself up really well. Plus, I didn't leave it on here for very long. I just left it on there to cut out this this uh, metal. Uh, and the metal is 100% historical purpose. It's not in association or in affiliation with any political party that may have existed back in the day and unfortunately still currently does exist within certain parties. So, please do not start jumping on for your pitchforks on there. So now I'm gonna put it down because this is the, again, the cross that I need and getting this matching up was the worst thing ever. It took me probably about half an hour and I was almost tempted to remake a new one because I thought I'd lose the adhesion, but I didn't, I was really happy about that. You can, the camera's having a hard time recording this because everything's so bright and white. But um, yeah, this is gonna be the white emblem on the back. This is what I wanted to keep on there. I'll show you one of the miniatures at the end of the video. So yeah, here we are, XF4 flat yellow. And look at that, look how nice it's going on there. Oh, it's beautiful. And that is because, uh, yeah, you guessed it, because of that nice flat coat on there. Tamiya yellow is in particular, 
a brute to airbrush. I've had lots of problems with it in the past, especially the gloss one. That one is the worst. But lately I've been finding out tricks and this is one of them to spray it on a white backdrop. That definitely helps out a lot. So you can do that with any other color as well. Seriously, um, especially yellow. If you're thinking, oh, I have a Krylon bottle and that's what I paint with. Yeah, well, you know what? A white base, base coat would go a long ways, believe me. So here I am, I'm just using up the rest of the paint here, filling up any little blotches that I can find. And I kind of actually did add a bit more um, yellow to some areas, and that helped out with the weathering effect quite a bit. Um, it, it, it made it look like it had been, some parts had been, you know, bleached in the sun, or who knows what had been, you know, running off a bit of the paint, which was just adds more to the look and the story that, you know, I'm trying to tell with the tank. Oh, here we go. This is the big thing. This is the big thing, guys, removing the masks. Everybody loves removing masking videos. You can see a bit of the mask all in there. It kind of looks like this weird kind of gravelly bit there. I only had a one little slip up and I'm kicking myself. I didn't put another piece of tape down the middle there. So, but for the most part, check that out. Look at that. Beautiful. There you can see a little yellow stain there. Uh, I did decide to just leave it. Now I tried a whole bunch of tools, but this one was surprisingly the best. It was actually using my uh, triangle ruler and just scratching it off. And it actually made a very nice look to it. You can see in some areas there's little bits of white and that makes it look like a real primer that they would have used on these, on these tanks. And all these little scratch marks that it left behind looked great. Looks really, really awesome. So there I've got all this little bit there. Take an eraser and go to town. Yeah, scratch it all off. Once I got it going and you just take the eraser and the eraser did the rest of the work. So I was really happy with that. So there you have the rest. I should have slowed the video down there. I apologize. Now time for the tracks. Um, what I really like about the, the Warhammer tanks is their tracks is they're just link and length tracks. There's nothing you know, complicated about them. They're really simple, so anyone can use them. You know, there's not many parts to these things. You just gotta give it a bit there. So there you can see the rust a lot more, which I was, again, just really, really excited about how, how, how nice that ended up looking. And uh, I've also added in a lot of details, little finishing details and stuff like that, you can see. Like adding the crest on the front there, and later on I'd add on the gun onto the turret. So, looking pretty darn good as far as I'm concerned. This was this was turning out, uh, I would say, uh, in my imagination it was better, but for a first time experiment doing this, and having that rust on there, this turned out way better than I had originally ever anticipated. This is Paneline Color, Tamiya Paneline Color. It is an enamel, which is an oil base paint. Um, I really like to use uh, mineral spirits to clean this stuff up. It does a good job and it doesn't eat away at the acrylic paint at all. Um, and you can find this, you can find all these products quite easily on eBay, local hobby stores. Most people should, like most hobby stores should know about these products. So if you're having a bit of a trouble finding them, eBay would be your best bet. So. I'm adding a bit of brown in here. So this is just again adding more to the texture and I wanted to I wanted to make a nice little layer of, of uh, grime here with with this onto the tracks just to give them a bit of something. I know lots of mothers like to use pastels and things but um, as far as tanks go it's, they're not my forte so <laughs> there's that big drop I made on there. I decided to just leave it because it, it just kind of added more to the effect and this this looked really great once it was dried it went into all the recesses and everything citadel rise of rust now this is the one i tried out first i really like this stuff it's a thick paint so it's meant for dry brushing so any area that i accidentally chipped away uh, i went ahead and took this paint and i put it on the areas where i may have scratched too hard and went down to the plastic um, so that was my easy way to clean it up afterwards. Um, eventually what I also went ahead and did, which was better, was just to use Tamiya Orange. This was a bit harder to, to do. It's more meant for dry brushing than this.
Alright everybody, here it is. It's done. This is my completed uh, Rhino. I think this is a Rhino. The name just left me. Um, but uh, yeah, I finished the gun here and painted it just black and added some silver details and gave it an enamel black uh, wash on there. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Sorry, the yellow's trying to take over here. And then I just left it on there at an angle so it's kind of pointed upwards as you thought it would kind of be at a, at a, I don't know, kind of an at ease left there position. Uh, in a way, mimicking a 50 caliber machine gun on, a, on like a Sherman tank or something. But anyways, um, here it is, guys. It's done. This was a very, very fun project. I really enjoyed doing this. I really enjoyed making and mimicking this rust. I learned a lot from it. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's a good starting point um, to go from. And I think what would have been nicer is if I had added more orange uh, into the mix. But I think the brown is is really, really where I wanted it to be. And you know, scratching it off was really nice. Um, to, again, just use the uh, triangle that I had and slowly, slowly rub it off. Worked really well. Really like the Humbrol mask all stuff. Um, I think it works. It works very, very well. Um, it's. I still don't think it's the best. I, I have yet to try um, like the Mr. Hobby brand, and I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go ahead and invest in that in a little while and give that stuff a try. Um, as far as the actual kit goes, it's very, very simple. Not a lot to it, which is really nice. So it's kind of a very quick, fun build. Um, you know, putting all the tracks together, they fit perfectly. There's nothing wrong with these link and length tracks. Um, there's nothing that I ran into. And I built two or three of these things. So um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did go ahead and paint a black trim around there just to help it come out a bit more and be more defined. So here he is standing next to a, one of the little troops that I built. So <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. I really had a lot of fun doing this and again I, I'm just really excited with how nice this turned out and getting to practice weathering it. And this is just basic weathering stuff. I mean there's a lot more things I could have done to simulate grime and, and, and grease stains and all sorts of things. There's so many so many more layers that you can add onto a tank but I really, really just wanted to have this really kind of cool um, chipped effect there, showing the rust through it. And um, I also was able to go to like a excavation site and look at a bunch of machinery that they had there, which has very much the same um, type of weathering in it. And I, I was kind of surprised to see I was I was actually on, you know, pretty spot on in a lot of areas of how it looked and how the how the brown looked again. It's still one of those things I'd like to tweak a little bit more and um, definitely get it right. But I think it looks great on the yellow. Again, I hope that for anyone that is painting on yellow that that might be help. Whether you're using spray paint, uh, airbrushing, or even even hand brushing, a good base coat of white primer. Um, you know, you can go buy a, like a five bottle, um, five dollar bottle of Krylon white primer, or even Tamiya makes a primer. And as long as you have that nice white base coat, it's much easier for the um, for the yellow to adhere to it and become more much more intense. Um, I didn't do that with this figure back in the day, and I, I think it was probably like five or six layers, even more than that, of yellow, trying to build it up and and get it to be the right color, and that's quite tiring uh, work. So the one base coat on there, I did have to paint it a little bit more. But not nearly as much as I would have had I just painted over the brown. It would have been horribly, horribly built up and it would have been very, very thick, which would have made scratching all this stuff off a lot harder. So, uh, again, I don't play this game enough. I just like to build these models from time to time because I think they're fun. So, I don't know if I'm following the rules and paint codes properly. And uh, quite frankly, I don't really care. I just wanted to build it and have some fun. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I will have the link to the gallery for this and many more kits and inbox reviews on the blog. That's rebels at cloud9.blogspot.ca. I will try and include a link to that down in the description below. So thank you so much for watching guys. You can leave a comment or a like on this video if you desire. That'd be great. 
And uh, yeah, that's about it. This is Robles with Cloud9. If I haven't taught you anything, at least you learned what not to do. I'll see you guys next time.